how do I even open this? So I got this Arts Next box. This is the ink collection. Now, like I bought this in the springtime. I guess I was uh, extra optimistic. Uh, and this year they said that it was 10 pieces instead of that one year I did it where it was six. And they had a, um, an arts course, which I don't really, I don't really do online classes. So I don't really care about those that much. Uh, so I think this is like their Inktober thing, but they're not calling it that anymore. So these are the stuff, the prompts that I'm probably not really gonna do. Got dum dums. This is teeny tiny. Whoa. Whoa, their stickers got so much more interesting. What's this? I I normally would get kind of embittered when they spend all the money on a paintbrush, but you know what? If it wasn't for art snacks, I would not have um met the wonderful uh Princeton Velvetouch would not have experienced that. I would have still been buying cheap brushes and not knowing the joy of a proper watercolor brush. What is this? It feels heavy. India ink? So I assume this goes with this. It's like a marbled pen. Well, I'm guessing that the nibs are in here. Sick. Whoa, these are really tiny. So this is also one that I got the last time I bought an expensive mystery box, but I broke mine. I put ink in it that was not proper and it dried up, and as far as I can tell, you can't fix it. So I'm actually kind of happy to be forced into getting a new one. But okay, I will try not to break this one, you guys. I'll try not to. Especially since I have a few really cheap ones that have not been working properly, so... Ooh, 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 did they change the box? This is cool. <laughs> this is a fine tipped boy. Is this a brush tip or a felt tip? This is felt. The downside to these pens, the pit pens, they get really uh, soft and worn down really fast. These probably won't last very long, but I, I do, I will enjoy. Got some microns, completely necessary. Again, I have a few of these, all of them not working anymore. <laughs> Waterproof? Watercolor artist, I need this. Speedball ink, white. I'm very interested to see how well this works. I don't trust white inks at all because they are never opaque enough for me. Ooh. <laughs> Liquitex acrylic inks. I got a couple of these. I got their like neutral tones. This one is bismuth yellow. It's not the nicest yellow, but I do appreciate. Now I got some sweet paper, which is good because I'm out of paper. It says it's cotton. It's very, it's not like thick, but I really, I'm really eager to see if I can use watercolor on this. Great. Okay. So here's something that I really enjoyed about this box. It's not junk, <laughs> you know? Sometimes it feels like they're just throwing in whatever leftovers that they have from some sale somewhere, right? The, the only thing that I don't really quite recognize is the Higgins chisel marker. I think the products that were chosen were very safe and that I absolutely appreciate <laughs> for something that costs, you know, 150 bucks plus shipping plus, you know, whatever, because I'm Canadian. It's like refills of things that I've either ruined or used up. <laughs> there was no um, online workshop course that they like to throw in because um, it does take a big portion of the value of the box especially since you have to be an art snacks subscriber to use the class and since i'm not so all in all i'm pretty happy i'm just not super excited by it inspired by it because it's not really anything new i have to put it in here wait what oh my god so this is just a sponge a delicate sponge that I'm probably gonna mess up. It's very inky. Ooh, that's pretty dark. I do have issues with brush pins where they're just not juicy enough to really uh, get going. But I remember liking this one because of how tiny, tiny lines can get teeny tiny lines. They all look the same, but they all have different numbers on them. Do I just shove it in? I don't know what it do, if anything. Oh, it's a lot. A mess. That's not bad, actually. I'm waiting for it to soak in and and vanish like every other ink out there. Hmm. What do you think? It looks like orange juice right now.
is very thin. I feel like it should be a little thicker than that. A little more robust would be good. I think I might actually mix it with one of the other inks. I'm not sure about this paper. The surface is very pilly. It looks like you can't really uh, be too abusive with this paper, even though it says you can use a lot of ink on it. And there's multiple layers of ink, so I guess you have to be very gentle. <laughs> this one's kind of weirdly blue and out of place, but it is just such a nice color that I like it a lot. This is black. Cool. Everybody know what a micron do. Ooh, they're black, they're juicy, they're not broken. So that's what I have to work with and I guess I'm gonna try to make something with this. So I decided to do zebra finch kind of overarching theme. I don't know if I would actually stick with a theme like that through a whole drawing challenge, but we'll see. I pretty much just flipped a tarot card and it was the three of cups or something like that and it was about um, joy and celebration and sharing and taking care of each other. So I just did finches with a cup of seeds making little, you know, popcorn garland but with seeds. Um, just something to draw so I can try out these supplies. And I'm not an inker. As much as I do tend to relent and draw lines around things when I probably shouldn't. I do find uh, ink in general to be a very blunt tool. So I feel like this would have been a lot more fun and nicer if I had a more cartoony style, I think. I was actually pretty impressed that the white ink did work out. I think it has a lot to do with the acrylic ink because acrylic is non-absorbent after it dries. And it's really weird to work with it because it does not have a viscosity like watercolor at all. It's almost sticky. It dries shiny. This yellow in particular is looks like orange juice and it looks like I'm painting with orange juice. At first, I actually really hated the paper. And it wasn't until I was doing the wash in the background that I remembered like, oh yeah, the things that I'm experiencing with this paper is probably just a hot press thing. I'm not a hot press paper kind of girl. I kind of like that you can get finer details on it, but it just doesn't uh, absorb color very well. And, it, and I was doing a different uh, project earlier where I was trying to do layering and deep colors and stuff, and it just would not take. And I thought that it was just a bad paper, but it's just a hot press thing. So with that in mind, the paper is actually probably great. It messes up the washes so bad, but I actually like the way that it did the wash in the background because it dries too fast so you can't get a smooth wash but I actually really like the ethereal watercolory texture that I got from the uneven drying of the paper as it's going and it's much easier to lift and do little splash effects on it as well. I didn't even use the microns or the sponge tip pen thing. The Copic pen is just really uh, versatile. <laughs> it's really, it's not great for blocking in big shapes. I would probably use a sponge tip for that, but I didn't do any blocking in shapes in this one. It was very, very colored inky, and I added a bunch of colors that I already kind of had to expand on the yellow a little bit, although I think I went a little too far. I'm not super um, impressed with my color selection here. And this is where I kind of have thoughts about Inktober in general. This box was meant for Inktober. It has an Inktober list in it. I've decided to take a couple of much smaller hashtags created by people who are in my Twitter feed. These are 15 prompt lists. So it's every other day for people who just can't create uh, wonderful works of art in a day. And that's kind of what I was thinking about the Inktober challenge on social media. Like it was meant to be, I think, for beginners who don't actually do a lot of drawing. It's just meant to build a habit to practice making time for it, but also having like a global support group of other people who are doing it so that you can check in with each other because it takes a month to create that habit, right? But it's sort of getting muddled up with people like us, people who are much bigger than me, are already in the habit. I still find it challenging because of the social media aspect. It's one thing to draw something every day, but it's quite another to share it and post it in an aesthetic way. And the sharing and posting part is the part that I find challenging to do every day. 
it's often something that you would do uh, at the end of the night in a rush. And by the time you're done, it's dark, your photos turn out really crappy. But if you post it the next day, you're technically a day behind because so many people are so far ahead. I already saw a video who in the previous month uh, went on a shopping spree to gather new art supplies and then doing like heavy levels of planning for each day and then doing sketches and just preparing a bunch and then starting a week before just so that they can be ahead of everyone and be on time and be perfect and and everything's a finished perfect colored piece when you're testing out something new it's not gonna be good it's not gonna be smooth or easy you're just kind of coming up with the first idea you can think of in a very short time and then you gotta take the photo aesthetically and post it and it's just like i can't uh, i can't keep up uh with the joneses <laughs> this monthly challenges and a lot of people probably feel the same way so yeah that's just my experience of why i specifically think the daily challenges are the most challenging <laughs> It's not even about making the time sometimes. It's like, it's it's everything. It's the whole thing. So if you follow me on social media, I might combine a couple of those and do my best. Even though it's every other day, I'm already still kind of struggling with it and always behind. But I do sketches every week for Patreon. You'd think that I would be used to it by now and, and it would be easy. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Maybe the Finch theme isn't working for me or something. But let me know what you think about uh, daily challenges like that if you find them really useful or oh and if you've joined my patreon for the ten dollar tier where i actually mail out uh, a sketch that i've done during the month i will be adding these to the pile <laughs> so check out my social media during october you'll probably get a glimpse of what those sketches will end up being and yeah thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next one